What are the roles and responsibilities of a Scrum Master? No, don't give me Scrum Guide. Let's look at your dreams and wishes. And let's look at the real world. What real organizations are asking of you as a Scrum Master? And we're going to have a little bit of an awakening here. This is going to be a longer video that's going to be tough love. But I hope you will join in this journey with me because first, we are going to look into a few job postings. What is it that companies seem to be looking for when they mean Scrum Master? Two, we are going to look into the patterns. Are they all different or can we see some similarities in job postings? And that is a good thing, right? And three, we are going to talk on a very frank conversation about a few lessons that I really hope for you to leave this video with. So without further ado, let's get started. This video will be long, but I hope you stay to the end when we talk about the lessons learned. So let's look into the positions and I found them basically in Indeed and in Glassdoor. I didn't go very far, but you can also check LinkedIn and even some specific company websites. So here's what we found. The first one is very interesting. It pays relatively well. It's, uh, near Mont it's in Montreal, near where I work. And the experience they are looking for is about collaborating with stakeholders, understanding business problem statements. They are talking about product vision and managing backlog of multiple products simultaneously. Uh, the whole interesting area of this uh, job posting for me, it feels like you're expected to be more of a, a project manager and you don't seem to be required to work developing teams at all. Nothing is mentioned in here. So it looks like your responsibility is on the stakeholder and work management front. So for me, in this case, it means that you need a lot of product backlog and techniques in here, validating those requests, you know, prioritizing and breaking down work, etc. This is not usually the full scope uh, that you would expect for a Scrum Master job. But what is interesting in such an opportunity is that you can grow a very particular set of skills, the one on the side of backlog and product management. And I would say former product managers and maybe some project managers might have an upper hand in this one. So here is another one, also not a bad hourly rate, also a contract, also in the area of Montreal here in Canada. And you start to see a few other things in this one here. Um, you definitely get a little bit more fluff. It's a little bit more generic. And why do I say that? It's not badly written, but you know, getting a team to high performing level by recognizing areas of strength and improvement and employing appropriate coaching and development techniques. Sounds really nice, except that it just doesn't really say much. It's very nondescript. You're responsible for ensuring Scrum is understood and teams use Scrum. You coach the teams in self-organization, cross-functional skill sets. Those feel like the very generic word that you say in Agile. And they, they are actually important words, but can you really understand what are the responsibilities on the day to day in this one? So I would say there's opportunity in here to make sure that I'm a good fit as a Scrum Master. I would, for example, ask what they mean by cross functionality. I would also ask what they mean by effectiveness of application of the Scrum in the organization. You know, so am I dealing with one team, many teams? Who is the whole organization? Are they all adopting Scrum? You want to understand what are you committing to? So, and in the required qualifications, you get a little bit more insight and you understand also that the person is really in trouble here because they start saying these things such as, um, you know, when they ask you to be highly able to prioritize and effectively manage multiple tasks, multitasking, multitasking being a red flag. While the others were contract and we could see the hourly rate in this one, we don't know how much they pay, but we know that they have plans for long term, which is always interesting because it means you can grow with them. When you look at the details, though, you go from in, in, transforming teams into the agile way of organizing and working. You're seeing that they are transforming from waterfall. So 
very interesting status quo changes that you're going to be helping introduce. You're going to work with the mindset of people. You are going to do the traditional stuff, you know, help with the ceremonies and, and remove blockers. And they start to show that you really operate more as a as a as an agile coach in here you know as a team coach you help with individuals you help with the teams and you join forces with other scrum masters to help facilitate the uh, continuous improvement i guess they are staying here for the organization and one of the things that you start also seeing is especially when you go in qualifications is that they get to accept you even if you were not a scrum master before. They were not necessarily saying you should have been a scrum master. They are really hiring based on experience. Now, not knowledge as well, and the knowledge that they ask is really not that simple. So hence why I'm leaning to think they're really asking for you to be an agile coach here. They want you to have a lot of knowledge in several frameworks, understand toolings, understand how to coach people and you know even understand collaboration techniques probably remote but also in person i would say and um i will still ask many questions here as far as the current state of things if i wanted to apply for this one because when you see them clearly saying we are moving from point a to point b one i want to understand what they mean by point b you know, it's not uncommon that organizations say we are adopting Agile and they don't really know what they mean by that. So you want to understand what is it that they mean by that. And you also want to understand, are you just advocating for the initiative or is there a champion doing this sort of thing? Because if you're here, hands on, really working with the people day in, day out, and you're also having to work with people, let's say, in leadership teams and having to really be on the, you know, on the forefront of the change. That is a lot of work for one person alone. Maybe it's, we're really talking about a couple of teams or one department. So I would clarify and understand what are they trying to accomplish from this traditional waterfall change to agile and, uh, and then make my mind as if I really want to apply here. Now I selected two others that are very similar and they are more on the technical side of things, showing that you can be a technical scrum master and that those are not opportunities that are open for everybody. You actually need to have the technical understanding because you're going to be involved with the, um, with the details. You're gonna be a very hands-on into how people do things, you know, the pipeline of development or support. This one is, it's more like I feel they're looking more for an, maybe an experienced production support manager and someone who understands uh, quality and understands um, the production and deployment, but also someone who understands Scrum, someone who can coach, someone who can communicate very well and have a great relationship with, uh, with, with people and probably, you know, you're talking uh, negotiation and, and talking about the state of things. So you understand the pipeline and you understand technology and you understand Scrum. So there's a lot of things being asked, but they... The cool stuff is that they relax on certification. They are not really that necessary and they seem to be more interested in your experience. So a lot of people rush to get a certification on Scrum or anything of the nature and think that's all they need. But we are seeing here that that isn't the case. In this one for uh, IoT, Internet of Things, don't even bother applying unless you really know your thing because developing for ARM and C and C++ on Linux is not for everybody. Been there, done that. The, you know, you know, Python, you know, too many things in here. And that's because they're even asking for you to be a Scrum Master and developer. Now, before people cringe, and a lot of people like to say these things, like you shouldn't be technical or you can't be a Scrum Master and a developer. Yes, you can. I've done that for over two years in the beginning of my career as a Scrum Master. And in fact, I would say it's important because you are asked to solve very specific problems. You understand the pipeline of development and you're hands-on with your team. One of the advantages is that you can build a ton of trust with the teams because you're one of them. You have the language and you have the report. So it works really, really well. And it's a great way too for the organization to 
frame your fit and you both know right away you don't even need to bother to apply if you don't have the very specific skills. Once again, they ask for no certifications. They want your experience and your applied knowledge. A tip I would give for whenever you are applying to those dual positions where you are, for example, developer and scrum master is to notice things like they say here. One, it can work really well because the team is experienced. So they won't need you to be holding people's hands. So that's really, really great. But whenever you have a dual role, I would really ask them if they understand the implications of sharing your time. Because there are things that will be the role of the Scrum Master. Whenever you find some very complicated issue, a stakeholder waiting down the line, the other developers need to continue producing work. And then you are in the front line trying to solve these things. So you have only one Scrum Master, but you have several developers. How do they see it? I would be interested in asking that. Now I select these last two that I call heavy hitters, agile coaches, because that's really what they are. Um, they are for very experienced coaches, consultants, or project managers. If you really read them, you will notice how much emphasis they put into interpersonal skills. Nobody here is talking about <laughs> velocity and story points. They really talk about the ability of being a great facilitator, negotiator, coach and guide people, make people talk, create alignment. This is not your average, I'm just beginning with agile type of thing. And they even say that, right? Despite the scrum name that you might find here, basically, you know, agile scrum ceremonies and etc., they really are asking you to have extensive lean agile knowledge when they say, for example, uh, effective planning. Uh, there was one here, what is it, that I really liked, you know, liaison between people. I think it was here that I saw, you know, like you have continuous flow you know, they are expecting something really more interesting from you than just, um, you know, your average, I read the scrum guide type of thing. And they consider understanding scaled agile as an asset. I would ask them, why is this an asset? Are they scaling? And I will not accept those, uh, you know, generic answers. Well, we are going agile, let's scale or things like that. I would really try and understand what problem is it that you're trying to solve with scaled agile approaches and not accept those nondescript answers. And I think in a position like that, with a job posting like that, they really will be giving you way better answers. Um, you know, they, they are definitely will be telling you is this because we want to improve the quality of our deliveries or we want to have better time to market or things of the nature uh, we have a nasty case of interdependency and we want to tackle that so i bet the conversation to get into this job here would be super interesting I hope you found interesting looking into those descriptions. They were all very different, although you could argue that there were a few patterns. So for example, adapting agile, being able to create something using best practices and adapting existing methodologies, but targeting the reality of the organization, the ability to partner with leaders and proactively manage and identify and solve issues in coaching teams and people. And it's not the same skill to coach a group, to coach one person. We saw a lot of asks about backlog management and delivery, production, performance, uh, you know, liaison inter teams and with senior stakeholders, with product managers also from other departments. And we didn't even get started with the tooling. Many of them mentioned tooling, Jira, of course, but many of them now are starting to ask you Azure DevOps boards, which is awesome, absolutely adore it. Um, but they will be naming Scrum and SAFE as a framework, but they will let you notice in the details that they are asking for more than that. In the end, they are asking you for Agile in general and in practice. And for the most part, they really ask you to be very hands-on, sometimes even super technical as to know the technology being applied. But in any case, they want you to manage the impediments, the problems, to track the progress, to be able to support people in the application of the practices. We are now in the final part of our video, but before we get into that, I wonder, were you surprised with some of the uh, job postings that I select to read in here? 
actually I didn't even select them. I just searched and got the first few in Indeed and then the next few in Glassdoor. And that's what we had. And they all turned out being also very different. So I wonder, let me know in the comments if you were surprised. And now I will tell you that I myself wasn't surprised. And it's something that I did experience in my career and experience that coaching other people to become amazing team and organizational coaches in the trenches. And I'll tell you, Scrum Master is not and never was a beginner position. You were always required to show proof in action of your abilities and as an agile practitioner, uh, show proof of your work and risk management capabilities, your coaching, your interpersonal skills, etc. So it doesn't work if you just woke up and decided to be a Scrum Master. And even if you read my amazing ebook, which you can consume in one sitting, you're not ready yet to just be a Scrum Master. It's, you know, many Scrum Masters, when they start, they think it's all about running the next cool retrospective. And that's that couldn't be further from the truth. And that's probably the least of your troubles when you're really trying to help teams to be effective in organizations to make a shift in the ways they work. And to the second important lesson, my friend, and it's hard, I know, but it doesn't matter what you want the Scrum Master role to be. It doesn't matter what's written in the in the Scrum Guide or your personal aspirations even. It matters what organizations need, what are they looking for, what they're willing to pay. You saw that the Scrum Master descriptions range from a fantastically skilled project manager to a full-blown agile coach slash consultant. Consultant indeed, because you saw many of those positions were contractors. So you should be able to come in, detect the issue, solve the issue and be ejected. And you're paid good price, averaging $100,000. Not too shabby, right? Definitely not a price a company will pay if you're unable to solve their problem. So they are not looking for a beginner in that sense. So what do you do then? You give up, you're a beginner. There is no hope for you. Absolutely not. Number one, study, gain the knowledge. These are competency-based professions or roles, if you wanna call them. Get into courses, join community of practices. Now, I do have paid courses, but I also offer a lot of free masterclasses, webinars, and Q&A. So link in the description down below for you to join for free. Second, application, both for learning and for applying. You don't need the title to use these skills. Start where you are right now, both as an agile practitioner and as a coach. Help your own team, help a colleague, help a different team in another department, but go after people who are interested in learning with you and from you. Wherever you do, you start by affinity. Along your career, you're going to have enough time to deal with resistance. So in this beginning stage, as you really want to collect wins and understand how things work, first work with the people who are just as interested or even more as you are. And then finally, network. A lot of great positions are filled internally or by reference. So you want to be in the loop and connect with people. In a bonus one, one more. Remember that I said stick to the end. And thank you for sticking to the end, my friend. You're golden. Because even though it feels a little bit like tough love, and I will acknowledge it is, you are dealing with a lot of competition. There is a lot of hiring in agile coaching, scrum mastering, and all these um, agility enabling professions. Yet, there is a lot of people competing and there is people with a lot more experience. There's people with not much experience. So you want to make sure that you can be in this race for the right reasons. So consider what is it that really makes you want to embark on this journey? Why do you want to be a scrum master? Is it the status? Is it money? You can get these things in other places. You know, you won't get that just because you became a scrum master. So just get that really straight in your heart and your mind and connect deeply with the motivation. So one that's going to help you go far is this one. You have a deep desire to make a difference in the lives of people and in how organizations work. You make a positive impact. You want to disrupt things a little bit and make people a little bit uncomfortable yet reach their next best level because that's what organizations want. That's what they need to get there and help people do so. There is a lot of study ahead of you, a lot of applied knowledge, and it's a never ending thing. 
Every year, I do a lot of paid courses. I do a lot of coaching with other coaches. I get into community of practices. I do coaching supervision myself. So you are in for continuously spending money and time in pursuit of excellence. And you can't expect anything else in this career. Now, that being said, this is such a rewarding, such a fulfilling career path, very dynamic. You grow so much as a person and you help so many people along the way. So I know today's video was long and was tough to hear. I know they don't teach that in Scrum Master School, but... Honestly, my friend, these are the things that matter for you to be successful and brilliant in your career, and I wish nothing less for you.